Okay, we're going to finish up by talking about some uh, practical applications of red black trees, and in particular, bee trees, which are uh, a general, general version. So the idea be, be, be behind, behind bee trees is that um, often the data that we're trying to store is, is really huge. There's a, a large amount of data, and we're, we're going to look at a more general model for external storage, uh, where uh, we work with contiguous blocks of data that are big, maybe uh, four, four K or bigger, or maybe even a whole file. And all we want to count is the first time we access a page, uh, because uh, the main cost uh, is trying to find where the page is. Uh, once it's read in, we get to read all the page for free, pretty much. So the uh, real property of uh, external storage, that not your local memory, is that the time required to get to a page is way larger than the time to access data within a page. So what we want to do is try to access data that's out uh, externally using a minimum number of probes. That's a model of a file system that uh, is uh, pretty workable. And so B trees are a generalization of uh, <coughs> balanced trees that uh, allow for this. Uh, the idea is to uh, allow not just two or three uh, keys per node, uh, but a, a large number, like the number that can fit in a page. So it might be uh, m equals 1,000, m equals 4,000. Uh, and well, we've got to have at least uh, two uh, keys at the root. Uh, and, and the only other restriction is that uh, we don't want the nodes to get too empty. Uh, so we can have less than m, but we want to have at least m over 2. And as you'll see, this is uh, a generalization of uh, two three trees uh, that allows us to uh, build balanced trees that uh, are very, very shallow. Uh, typically, these are set up so that uh, the, all the data is in the external nodes. And so the uh, external nodes have no links, they just have keys. Uh, and uh, they're in, kept in sorted order. Uh, so for example, this is a external, this is m equals six, this is an external five node. Uh, so it's got five keys, it's got uh, uh, room for one more temporary one. Uh, and then what'll happen is when you insert into a full node, uh, it'll split uh, in the same as before, and then we'll pass the uh, split up, causing uh, a split in, uh, uh, up higher. Uh, so the red keys in the internal nodes uh, uh, are copies of keys down uh, below uh, that uh, direct the search. Uh, and it's, uh, that, that's a, a little extra detail that just makes the uh, implementation a little bit easier, and that's the way that it's usually done. Uh, so, but for now, the main idea is that uh, it's, it's like a 2-3 uh, tree, uh, except that we allow way more keys per node. Uh, and then when a node gets filled, it splits into two, uh, so a node's always between half full and full. So M is 1,000, it splits in two, and then each side has 500. And then we can use uh, that property of the trees uh, in the analysis to uh, show that uh, it's not going to be uh, very many probes to get to any key. Uh, so the uh, search is, uh, you know, just the same as we've been doing, just generalized. Uh, there's a list of keys at every internal node, uh, and uh, that key uh, uh, tells you, that, and then links for every key uh, f that uh, give you uh, a place where your key uh, would have to be. Uh, so uh, th this link is for all the keys in the B tree that are between this key and the next one. Uh, and in every case, it's that way. So if we're looking for E and this B tree, we go down the left link. Uh, and then we'd go down the second link because E is between D and H. And that's just the way it organized. And then when you get to an external node, you just look for it. And so that's uh, uh, all searches terminate in an external node. And otherwise, it's just a generalization of what we just did. Uh, and insertion uh, works the same way. Uh, we get to the bottom uh, and, then, and then we split. So let's look at just inserting A into this B tree. 
uh, it comes into the node on the left, uh, and then that makes that temporarily over full. Uh, it's got one too many, so we split it into two nodes, and that causes us to add a new entry into this internal uh, node. In this case, it's a C, which is the smallest one in this new page, and that has to be added. And we can move all those over. There's plenty of time by the memory model uh, we're only counting the number of times we access the pages, and we get to move things around for free. And you could have some hybrid structure where uh, you use uh, uh, something different for the internal model, but usually it's fine just to do that. Uh, now that one becomes over full, uh, so it has to split, uh, and we have to create a new root, uh, just in the same way as we've been doing. Uh, so without uh, seeing all the details, uh, you can uh, understand that the same basic idea is going to work uh, in this uh, uh, much uh, <coughs> this situation where we're dealing with much, much more memory. And so the uh, end result is that uh, a search or an insertion in a B tree of order M, that's where we're putting the M keys per page, requires between log base m minus 1m and log base m over 2n probes. Uh, and that's going to be a really small number. So say m is 1,000, uh, log base m over 2 is, uh, is this log base 500. So what power do you have to raise 500 to to get bigger than n? Uh, in practice, that's going to be like 4 or 5. And we can keep the root page in memory. Uh, so that it means for uh, any conceivable application, uh, uh, you can get to uh, any piece of data, even if it's trillions of, uh, of pieces of data, and it's huge, huge file, uh, you can get to any one with only uh, five or six probes. Uh, it's, that's quite amazing. It's a, really an a, a astounding example of algorithmic technology uh, doing something that uh, you wouldn't really uh, necessarily think that uh, you could do so easily. Maintain a dynamic uh, search symbol table with trillions of keys so that you can get to any key just by looking five or six places. Uh, but that's what B-trees provide for us. Uh, this is uh, a simulation that shows a, a, a growing B tree. Uh, so when a page, the, at the top, there's just one page that fills up. When it fills up, it's, it's red, uh, and that splits into two half pages. And then keys get added on one side or the other. Uh, so uh, each uh, line in this table, uh, some page is getting a new key, and eventually one of them fills up and splits. Now we have three pages, uh, and we keep going. Eventually, one of them fills up and splits. Now we have four pages, and now this time the first one fills up and splits, uh, and so forth. So uh, the black is the occupied part of the, part of the page. The white's the unoccupied part. Uh, and full to page about to split, then right below there's two pages. So this shows the process of building a large B, B tree. Uh, uh, that, uh, and you can see the amount of black. Uh, it's uh, kind of half empty. It's a little more than half empty, usually, uh, analysis shows. And, and people uh, have variants of these algorithms that keep it uh, more, much more than half em empty if that kind of space is a, uh, is a consideration. So uh, as I've mentioned, uh, red, black trees, and B trees are widely used as uh, system symbol tables. Uh, the Java implementation of tree map and tree set is red, black trees. Uh, C++ uh, standard template library uses uh, red, black trees. Uh, and it's also uh, used in the uh, Linux kernel and in uh, many other systems. Uh, B trees, there's many different variants that uh, give different uh, characteristics of uh, space usage uh, uh, and uh, other uh, <coughs> characteristics uh, in most databases uh, nowadays uh, that, uh, that you might use, uh, SQL or Oracle's database and others uh, are based on uh, some variant of B trees uh, because they're uh, so, so effective. But you really know that your data structure algorithm uh, is used by a lot of people when it appears in the popular culture. Uh, my friend uh, Philippe Flagellet, uh, who uh, recently died, but was a famous French uh, mathematician, uh, sent me an email uh, late one night. He was quite excited because uh, he was watching a rerun uh, on, of uh, an English uh, 
uh, actually Canadian TV show uh, on French TV. I didn't know he spent his time doing that, uh, but he was very excited because he saw this clip. It was the red door again. I thought the red door was the storage container. But it wasn't red anymore, it was black. So red turning to black means what? Budget deficits, uh, red ink, black ink. It could be from a binary search tree. The red black tree tracks every simple path from a node to a descendant leaf that had the same number of black nodes. Does that help you with the ladies? Uh, so uh, n not only is there some excitement in that dialogue, but it's also technically correct, which you don't often find with math and popular cu culture or computer science. A red-black tree tracks every simple path from a node to a descendant leaf with the same number of black nodes. Uh, they got that right. And that's also true of bee trees, and both of these methods are very effective and widely used.